I can show you how to sketch an apple with watercolor in few really easy steps. You would not believe how easy it is. So if you have a brush and a piece of paper and watercolor paint, join me in this step-by-step -step follow along. Hi, I'm Leila, a professional artist. Welcome to my art studio and this channel where with every video you can propel your skill through lots of different tips, tricks, step-by-step -step videos on painting and drawing. So remember to subscribe to get yourself the most knowledge that you can. To follow along, you would need a piece of watercolor paper. I'm using 300 GSM Archer's paper. Watercolor paint, any kind you have. Brushes suitable for watercolor. And if you're like me, your glasses. So first things first. Now let's have a look at the overall shape of the apple. For that, you would need to draw a circle. If you are curious about how to structure objects, I do have a video on this channel about that, so you can check it out. Next, we want to see the difference between the apple and the circle. The apple that I'm drawing has a little bit extra on one side, so just a little bit over here and a little bit on the other side, right on the top there. It also is a little bit narrower, it's almost like these sides a little bit shaven off. Here we go, so now I have an overall shape of the apple. Now we can add any other things that you see on the apple itself. This little line here, and also a little twig sticking out. I can also see a little bit of the shadow. And I'm going to mark that through as well. So if you guys are following along, make sure you do the same thing. Now we can get rid of all the extra lines that we don't need. A nice big feather can be a very useful tool for getting rid of the little bits and pieces of a razor. So now we are ready to paint. You see how easy it was to structure it? And that's because we started with a very simplified geometrical shape. Mm -hmm. By the way, for those of you who are my patrons, on Patreon I will be putting out everything step by step. So each layer that I'm applying will be there as a separate image, just if you need a little bit more of that still shot action. Next, it's time to pick up your brush. And what we're going to do with that is pick up some clean water and just apply it all over the apple shape, just like that. Next, I'm going to mix up a color, Madder Lake Red, and a little bit of Prussian Blue. By the way, if you guys can hear that, I think we're having a thunder. It was really, really sunny just a minute ago, and now everything's turning really funny out there. So if you hear those noises, it's probably just a very quick shower that's coming in. Okay, now in a very, very diluted way, even more water here like that, I'm going to cover all of the apple except for a little, just a little bit over here like that. and a little line just over there. Now, if you have gone over the areas that you still want to be light, it's not a problem. You can always just absorb the water from your brush and go in and reabsorb the paint. Make sure to do this while your paint is wet. And I will do a line like this over here. Okay, so here we go. 
This is our first painting step. Now I'm going for some transparent pyrrole orange and mixing it up with some scarlet red. While the apple is still damp, I'm going to apply this color like that on the side. And a little bit over here. Also, tiny bit on the side. And here. If you want more intensity, you can grab the paint straight away and without diluting it on the palette, you can just add a little bit more here and there if you need to. Now I'm picking up a little bit more orange and applying it right there. While well, this is all damp, but the paint will take care of itself. I think guys we have hail. Let's have a look. What a change of weather. You can see that just a couple of minutes ago I was filming the intro for the video and it was so sunny and bright. And look at it now. Crazy. This is New Zealand, Auckland weather, you guys. For those of you who don't know, I'm filming all this in New Zealand. Now you can see how much everything has changed in my studio with that weather change, right? So what I wanted to say is that if you are enjoying this video and you would like to see more videos or you simply would like to support this channel, please go over to my Patreon page where you will be able to see extra videos that are not available here on YouTube. You can make requests over there. Uh, as well as suggestions and voting for next video. You can even win artworks that I create, like this one, for example, here that I'm creating. This will be sent over to one of the patrons. Whether you are into more knowledge about art or you just love the videos because they help you relax or both, Make sure to go over there and check it out. I really look forward to seeing you there. And it's gone so cold in the studio. Instantly, instantly, you guys. Okay, enough with the weather trouble. Let's carry on with the tutorial. So my next step is to apply a deeper, darker red. So I'm going to use mainly Madder Lake. And then if I add any other colors, I will let you know. This is already somewhat dry from looking out the window. <laughs> Okay, so here we go, but it's still a little bit damp, so that's perfect, really. So here I'm just applying deep red. You can use any deep red that you have on hand. And I'm just applying this color in the areas where I can see a really deep, strong red color. Okay, so now we have this almost like a lumpy, patchy looking thing. Next, you want to make sure that in areas where you want it to, you can merge it quite nicely. So for example, like here, what I've done is I've washed my brush and I have dried quite a bit of water from it because this brush holds quite a bit of water and I'm just going to very gently soften it like that so that I get a really nice, but still reasonably strong. Uh, color change, but it's, it transits a little bit nicer. And same here, I want to soften this line a little bit. You want to do all of this reasonably fast, well, depending on the conditions where you're painting. If it is like over here, cold and haily, <laughs> the paint might take a bit longer to dry, so you've got more time to play with paint. If you are living in a very dry, very hot climate, your timing might be cut a little bit shorter than mine at the moment. Now I'm going to deepen the highlight in some areas. So I'm actually going to use a clean brush and wash out a little bit of the color on the apple into the parts of the highlight. Also remember that the texture of the apple is usually not perfect. You'll get little bumps and all of that will reflect in the highlights as well. 
Now I'm going to mix more of that color that we used first. Remember when we did that underwash using that deep red with a little bit of blue? So I'm doing that again. But this time, rather than using it in a very diluted way, I'm actually going to use it in a very strong paint. But remember, a watercolor is never used thick, so you always have to have water with it. So here we go. This, and then that shadow carries through on the side as well. It's a reasonably shiny, reflective apple, so we get all sorts of areas of darker and lighter colors and again go i'm going to soften the edges where i need them to blend in a little bit smoother for some strange reason it does seem to be like a strange day today <laughs> my camera did not film so i will just go step back and i'll show you i've mixed this color here which is the same mix just using a little bit more blue um, this time and I have covered these areas here with that sort of more of a purplier color than burgundy color here. I'm at the moment applying a warmer color, a warmer red like we did here, orangey red on the bottom part here and on the side here as well. Now I'm going to go for a brush that's a little bit smaller. And I'm going to mix up a bit of the darker color. So I'm again, I'm still using that uh, Madder Lake Red with the Prussian Blue. But I'm also going to add a tiny bit of Burnt Umber. So it's like a deep brown in there. So the color becomes even deeper in shade. And now I'm going to deepen even the areas that are quite dark. Now you can see that they're not super wet, but they're still quite damp, so the paint can go through nicely and merge with the previous layers. I'm also going to use a little bit of that color to uh, add little aspects on the top part of the apple as well. Next, I'm going to use this color, but really, really diluted. Okay, so that it's mainly water with just a little bit of that same color. And I'm going to deepen the highlight just a tiny little bit. Like this, and then soften the line. So always remember to soften without applying too much water though, because you don't want pools and puddles to be washing around here and creating little cauliflower effects. I'm also going to apply a little bit more of the shadow just here on the bottom. But just in a thin line, softening it so that it doesn't look like an outline. Now you see this little bit here, I want to soften it a little bit as well because it just seems a little bit too strong at this stage of the painting. Remember while you're working on your painting it is never finished so anytime you feel that you need to go back and add something there feel free to do that okay. Wow what a crazy day today you guys. Okay so here I've got a bit of warmer red and I'm just applying it on some of the areas on the top that I really want to zing just a little bit more with that warmness, you know, where the light is hitting it. Okay, so now we've got this going on. Uh, next, 
I am going to show you how to do the shadow and how to do the little stack. Okay, so now I'm going to go for the smallest brush um, that I've prepared for this tutorial. The main thing is that it has a good tip, you know, where all the hairs come to one point. So in that case, you can use even a larger brush as long as you're happy and comfortable using the brush for details that should work absolutely fine. Now for the little twig, I'm going to use burnt umber. It's this kind of a color. You can use anything that you have suitable on your palette. And the first layer is going to be just a little underlay, undercoat. It's not super dark, but it shows the shape quite well of the little twig. And you see, by creating and finishing off this twig, uh, we can actually really see now that line that catches quite a bit of a light on the apple. Now I'm mixing up a color that's a notch darker for that little twig at the top. So I'm actually using the same colors that I've used for the darker spots on the apple, like that deep burgundy uh, color with blue, but I'm also adding a little bit of neutral tint. Now if you don't have neutral tint, you can always use black. Now here you want to add shadows where you see them. So these could be shadows that help you to demonstrate the form and the three-dimensional aspect of the little twig. Or perhaps you want to create a little bit more contrast. I'm also going to use that color to create a little bit more contrast on the apple itself. So anywhere where you'd like to deepen the shadows or the color of the apple, um, you can use that color too. Okay. So now let's have a look at some other areas that you might want to darken. So something like this on the side here. Just make sure you don't leave these things as outlines because that will make your apple very flat instantly. So what you want to do, if there is a darker area right on the side with the background, you can add a little bit of darkness, but just make sure you bring it in. And also don't do it as a continuous line. You can always add these things in certain areas. Like that. Okay, now let's move on to the shadow. Remember, you don't have to do it if you're just happy to have your red apple like this sitting on this cut-off white background. But I want to show you how to do a shadow just in case you guys want to learn how to do that too. So, to create the shadow, I'm going to mix burnt umber and Prussian blue that we've used previously to mix with red. So, this time it's these two colors. Try to mix as neutral of a shade as you can. If you add too much blue, it will be like a blue mix. If you add too much brown, the mix would be too warm. So make sure you're doing something that's uh, right in the middle. And here I'm going to go in with a reasonably soft color. And just like we did before, remember with the underpainting for the apple. Very soft color, quite a bit of water here. And same on the other side.
Now, because the shadow goes in and kind of disappears, I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to wash my brush, get quite most of the water out and soften the edge just like this. Same on the other side. Now I'm going to go back in and get a little bit of the less diluted color. It's still that same color, but less water and more paint. And just applying it like that. You want to create a reasonably gradual change. Still using the same color, but a bit deeper. I'm going to apply another color here, another layer here. And deepen it even more. You can make it even darker at this stage you would probably have to mix in either black or something like neutral tint to make sure that it's a darker shade. So just to show you, I will mix in a bit of neutral tint. And add just a little bit more. And you can see how the shadow is really helping for the apple to stand up. And this is what it looks like at this stage. And now is the perfect time to have a look and see if there are any areas you want to refine, you want to shade, or maybe you might like to add more of the skull saturation, like reds and oranges and yellows and so on. So the one thing that I see that I'd really like to correct is this line here it's sort of bothering me it's a little bit uneven there now that's better another thing that i'd like to do is to add just a little bit more shadow so i'm going to go back in to the matter lake red and just apply another layer over this here now by now already most of the paper is dry except in the areas that I worked on before so now this is already applying kind of a, like a second layer and softening it out like this so this this little thing that I'm just doing here, what it's doing is it not only is it creating a darker area, but it's also intensifying the color. So here I'm going to intensify the color too. And same goes for this warm orangey red, fiery red. So I'm just going to apply another layer here. just to build it up a word of warning though when you're doing this at this stage make sure that you don't over thicken your paint if you're creating a paint layer where you can see the texture of the paint you've gone too thick for watercolor so remember this is still watercolor so yeah it's it's uh, you know if you if you especially if you're using paint from tubes this can be something to watch for And now I'm also going to introduce a little bit of that orangey red just up here on the top there, where the highlight is. I'm actually just going to go into into 
orange just the orange itself and add some more of that here there is one more thing that we can add and that's adding those little spots and dots on the apple that I can see they're very soft but they are there for that I'm going to use a white gouache and I already have a little bit of that on my palette you can use white watercolor I'm also going to mix a little bit of yellow into it because it's they're not so so much as white as they are orangey yellow so just using a warm yellow and applying a little little spots just like that here and there you can make some more intense and some a little bit softer Make sure that you put them everywhere you see them if your apple has that kind of a pattern too. Now I'm also going to take this chance since I've got that color on my brush and I'm going to create little highlights on the twig as well. You can do the same thing with a darker color and put a few spots here and there. You know with the color you used for the shadow. And now you see as they dry, you know, becoming more and more dry, they sort of are becoming, disappear almost, because the white paint, as it dries, remember everything is quite damp, it sort of mixes in with the color and it's not so obvious. So what you can do is, just for some of them, you can pick up more of that paint with white and you can go over and just make some of them just slightly brighter. And here we go, the apple is finished. What do you guys think? Well, what do you think? I look forward to hearing uh, your ideas and your commentary um, under this video. So please let me know. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, I want to say a big thank you to the patrons that are supporting this channel. Thank you guys so, so very much. Hope you have a lovely day. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.